In 1970, McLaren introduced the MHC in the Can-Am Racing Series. It was powerful, very fast, and aggressive looking. What if he could make this for the street? Manta Cars did just that. This California company, it was owned by Brad and Tim Levette, showed a finished example in their showroom in Santa Ana. Their new kit car was originally called the Can-Am, but the SCCA objected to the use of a copyrighted name, so they changed it to the Manta Mirage. The car featured all of the necessary street equipment, such as headlights, horn, taillights, etc., but they did change the bodywork to make it into a closed cockpit coupe instead of the open cockpit Can-Am version. For the initial price of $3,000 for the chassis and the body, it became very popular. It was very advanced for its time. The car on the showroom floor at Manta Cars had a license plate reading Manta 2. This was the second factory built example of their Mirage, the first one having been burned up in a fire at their original location in Costa Mesa. The next few photos are of Manta 2 at the Manta Cars facility and these are courtesy of Sammy Pope. Note that the wheels and the pinstriping design on this car changed over time. Their showroom cars were featured in many magazine articles and advertisements. Here's one that was taken on the Pebble Beach golf course. Tim Levette is standing by a Mirage. Notice how low it is. It's less than 40 inches tall. When Manta Cars closed its shop, in 1985, the show car, Manta 2, had been shipped to Tucson to have some modifications done on the front end. It was in Bill Cheeseburg's shop, being converted from a VW trailing arm front suspension to a Mustang 2, a much more modern and suitable suspension. The modification had been started, but not completed, so when I bought it, the car was in pieces and had been lying around in the weather for a couple of years. So what I bought was essentially a pile of parts, figuring out how to complete what they had started and do the restoration. One of the puzzles concerned the front conversion to disc brakes. There were a few parts with the disc brake included with the pieces that I bought but it wasn't complete, so I had to figure out what I needed. It turned out that the conversion involved a disc system, which was not actually a Ford product. It was from a Chrysler K car series of uh, the mid 70s, and it included the discs and the rotors with an adapter. I modified the Mustang II A arms considerably and uh, did it boxed in for additional stiffness and put in some Alden coilover of front shocks and springs. This car uses a hydraulically actuated clutch so that there are two master cylinders. The engine is a small block Chevrolet uh, with 186 heads uh, which have been modified and uh, a definitely non-stock cam of some sort. Horsepower is around 400. The transaxle is a late model Corvair four speed, and uh, the adapter uh, is uh, adapted to the small block Chevrolet engine. The electrical system is a little different. You notice the micro switch in the slide with the emergency brake. There was a system designed to prevent the engine being started with the car in gear and the emergency brake off, uh, which is probably a good idea if it were sitting on the showroom floor. You don't want it to go flying out the glass windows onto the street. The engine could be started either from the normal key in the dash and also with a key in the engine compartment. This was, I suppose, a uh, convenience for starting the engine and demonstrating it to customer. The instruments were all VDO, so-called jet cockpit series. I solved the problem of how to use a horn button 
with a removable steering wheel by taking a quarter inch phone plug and mounting that in the steering wheel and then a phone jack uh, in the steering hub. So any way that you place the steering wheel it made contact. A few small aircraft cockpit lights uh, were added as well as a pair of mirrors from an F-86 Sabrejet fighter which I found in a local aircraft salvage yard. They are metal mirrors and slightly convex with a curvature that uh, fits the uh, windshield hoop very nicely. The visibility out of the rear quarter uh, in these cars is terrible and these mirrors really solve that problem nicely. The pinstriping is a design by Shaky Jake, a popular pinstriper from California who eventually moved back to Arizona. His name was Shaky Jake uh, professionally but his real name was Chuck Babbitt, a very talented fellow. As you can see from the design on the rear, here is a magnified portion of that. Can you imagine doing this with a brush? The original car just used Corvair rear drums as well as uh, Corvair rear suspension, uh, late model Corvair. And with a car of this performance, the drum brakes just didn't make sense. So I converted it over to rear discs. And this necessitated uh, coming up with an adapter, which I made out of two pieces of aluminum plate uh, that bolted together and adapted a 1988 uh, Corvette rear caliper and uh, rotor to the uh, Corvair hubs. I modified this shift linkage a bit by adding some Teflon bushings uh, to uh, make it a little bit smoother. So now the car is actually running and back on the street. First order of business is to relicense it from California plates to Arizona plates. And to maintain continuity, I used the same number, Manta 2, on my Arizona plates. I drove the car on the street routinely and entered it in a number of car shows and that was always a lot of fun. It attracted a lot of attention. In fact, at one of the car shows here in Tucson, there was a group of people surrounding the car and one guy went over, looked under the engine cover and he announced to his friend, hey, this ain't no VW. <laughs> <laughs>